But I wonder how many times you've marveled at the work of our colleagues in the written press, especially some of those photographs in the cycling magazines. Well, now's your chance to find out how it's done in the company of Graham Watson from Winning Magazine. They say that every picture is worth a thousand words. And when you purchase a cycling magazine, one thing that strikes you immediately is the quality of the images of the Tour de France. Cyclists in action and the stark, beautiful panorama are the photographer's delight to portray. But to convey the feeling and mood of the tour is not easy. Graham Watson is a specialist in cycling photography, and this is his 13th Tour de France. His daily life is being part of the peloton on a motorbike. But why a motorbike? Because it's the most mobile way of seeing a cycle race. It's the best way to see a cycle race. You have to be very quick going past cyclists. You have to be very quick going in there and certainly getting out of the cyclists. And a motorbike is the only way to do it. It's very narrow. I think it's almost the same length as a, as a, cy a cycle. And it's very easy to go past. It's very easy to get in there, get out, see as much as you want. It's not possible to do the same job in a car. Most people think it's a very glamorous job, but it's not. In fact, most times it's very, very uncomfortable. Especially if you happen to follow a section of the par there this year's Tour de France. There are times at 40 miles an hour when you, when you simply cannot sit on the motorbike because you're being judged and thrown around so much. It's also credit to the driver that you can do this. He is, he is your second set of eyes. He is the man who sees you safely through each day and who also gets you into these situations and out of them, hopefully. And it's to him our alarm most of all. When not behind his pilot, Watson has usually spotted a moody position amongst the flora and fauna that abounds in France. And the result? Often beautiful pictures like this in the French language paper Tour Hebdo. On the finish line, Watson is among the privileged few allowed to capture the joy and the agony of being either a winner or a loser. When the urgency of the day is over, it's off to the podium for the jersey presentations, where things are a little more controlled. So, what does Graham look for that makes his photographs accepted by everyone as among the best images in the world? It depends very much on the situation which I find myself in. Cycle racing is a very, very attractive sport. And it's also a sport which, which is ever-changing. Its face is changing, the scenery is changing, its environment is changing. What I look for is to pick out the best way to illustrate that particular side of the sport. It can be a cyclist winning a race with his arms in the air looking very, very happy. It can also be a cyclist who just falls on the ground and has cut himself and is very, very unhappy. Or a cyclist who is having a very difficult time climbing an 8,000 foot high mountain. There's, there's, a, there's a sad side to cycling, there's a very happy side to it. And it's very enjoyable being able to take both sides of it. To get the best shots, Graham's armory consists of three cameras and ten lenses. The lenses vary from a 16mm fisheye to a 300mm telephoto. The situation dictates the type of lens used. These are the tools of my trade. This is the 16mm fisheye lens, which I use especially for the shot of the Eiffel Tower on the last day of the race. It's the only lens that you could possibly use because the Eiffel Tower is so tall and obviously the bunch of sizes are very, very long. There's no other lens which could bring that picture out as this, that this one does. This is a 300mm lens which is extremely heavy and which at the end of the day can make a very sore shoulder that's worth carrying with you because situations do arise. For instance, if you happen to see a large sunflower field where the cyclist is going to come through, the ability of this lens, the, the attraction of this lens is to make that picture that much more powerful to give the effect that they are actually riding through a field of sunflowers, which of course they're not. It's a very, very strong lens. It's well worth carrying with you all day long. I'd use this lens, the 180mm, for finish line shots only, at no other time at all. There's this shot, this lens I use on the motorbike, which is the one I use for head-on shots when I travel about 8 metres in front of the race. Also, this lens I use for side-on shots, or when I'm very, very close on a mountain climb, when I'm about 5 feet in front of the cyclist. And there's the other lens, the 24mm, which I use for more, you say, normal wide-angle shots. So, next time you buy a cycling magazine and see Graham's name, you'll know that he, like the riders, is a true professional who searches daily for the ultimate result. Well, now you know, the riders steal the limelight naturally, but there are other stars on the Tour de France as well.